It's been roughly 15 weeks since my last video, where I announced my return to my game project, The Hero of Pixel Spire, which you can wishlist on Steam, by the way. Since then, I've been grinding away on the game, collecting playtester feedback, and implementing all sorts of new features. So to start things off, here's a clip of before, and now here's a clip of after. Huh? As you can see, the difference is jaw-dropping. Okay, so before we rewind the clip and start playing the game dev equivalent of Where's Waldo, there really hasn't been much changes to this section of the game, or you know, the combat in general. That was mainly just a joke, but also to outline just how much time making a game actually takes. Doing just a bit of math, each week I've been putting in 40 hours of game dev, and since it's been about 15 weeks, that puts us at a total of 600 hours. I will admit, I did take a couple days off around the Christmas holidays, and you know, that week I almost died from a fever. You know what, 500 hours sounds like a better video title anyway, so let's just call it 500 hours. Anyways, even though the title of the video is what 500 hours of game dev look like, I feel like I have to add just a small disclaimer. Even though I put that much time into developing the game, that doesn't necessarily mean that another developer wouldn't achieve more or even less progress in the same amount of time. Let's just take my video's title with a grain of salt and just celebrate all of the hard work I achieved. So with that out of the way, let's get you guys caught up on what I've been up to. So the past couple months, I have actually released two more updates to all the playtesters on the Discord, with the first being called the Ice Biome Update and the second the Summoner and Progression Update. Some things can be deciphered just from those titles alone, but let's not get ahead of ourselves and start with what I did in the very first update. In this update, I focused on implementing a brand new ice biome. This includes a brand new environment, floor layouts, enemies, and even a boss to defeat. Let me just say, it was a massive task. This is especially true because up until now, there has actually only been one biome in the game. So to put it frankly, I doubled the game's length. I think that kind of speaks volumes for itself. And without giving away too many spoilers, as I'd love for you guys to play yourselves, we can move on to the other things I did in this update. So not only did I add this whole new ice biome, I also heavily focused on implementing the first bit of playtester feedback. Needless to say, after getting feedback from, you know, total strangers, there was a lot to implement. Overall, it wasn't as bad as I was expecting though, more or less just some balancing issues and a couple of small bugs. Nothing all too game breaking or all too serious. Some more notable changes are the main menu rework, some new spells, and this cool little Christmas hat. Compared to the list coming up for the next update, this really might not seem like much, but again, I literally made the game twice as long. So with all of the major changes of the first update out of the way, let's jump straight into the second update. In this update, I had other things on my mind. Rather than adding to the game's length, I wanted to add a bit more to its depth and fix some of the systems currently in the game. A big thing that was bugging me is I felt all of the systems in the game were just a little too loosely connected. You have to go here to change your vanity items, here to change your pets, here to change your class, click this button to open your gems, and not to mention I wanted to add a difficulty option for each run, which, you know, would probably be its own entity as well. Looking back on this, this is just way too much for the player to navigate, and honestly, most playtesters didn't even bother going through the hassle. So to fix this, I decided to add everything into one cohesive system and call it the loadout system. This should make each and every playthrough so much easier to customize, and it doesn't have the player wandering all over the enclave trying to figure out how things work. You might have also noticed this perks tab in the loadout system. This update, I ended up removing the gym system entirely and replacing it with perks. I really like the idea of moving and organizing gems, but I feel like it was just another unnecessarily complicated feature that something like a perk system could easily replace. We will circle back around to the perks and how to unlock them in just a moment. Let's first talk about the new difficulty settings I mentioned earlier. In the Loto system, you can now select your difficulty, and here you have your typical easy, normal, and hard, which, you know, probably work how you expect. The harder the difficulty, the harder the enemies, and the more that they spawn. You can change it per run, and I've also tied some cosmetic unlockables to the difficulty you're playing on. So, for example, only if you defeat the Tiki Mask boss on the hard difficulty will you unlock the little tiki mask vanity buddy. Moving on from difficulties, there is now a new progress tracker called the Heroes Log, which is located in the pause menu. You can go in there and see details about everything you encountered in the game so far, as well as how to unlock certain items. 
Speaking of unlocking items, each time you do, the item you now unlock briefly appears on a little sidebar on the right of the screen. And then when you die, there's actually a brand new game over screen that is displayed that gives you a point indicator of how well you did in the run, as well as reminds you of what you unlocked. Since we're here, we might as well circle back to the perk system. So after the game over screen, those points that you earned are actually used as experience and go towards unlocking another perk. As a side note, it's also worth noting each perk is randomly chosen, so every playthrough will be unlocking different perks at different times. This new perk system gives the players something to work towards, and now even your failed runs will be worth something, as you might just unlock a perk that helps you improve in your next run. With perks now explained and all the large new system changes out of the way, let's talk about the brand new summoner class that I added in this update. I knew I definitely wanted to add a new class to the game. I love playing a summoner in any RPG, and the idea of having minions fight for you is just such a cool concept. So I got to thinking, why not add it in my own game? The summoner's primary attack is a poisonous projectile that inflicts a new status effect, poison, onto any enemy hit with it. And their secondary spell is the ability to summon a skeleton. Since it didn't exist before, this introduces a new minion summoning system to the game, which only allows you to have one minion summoned at a time, which as you can see, it has a timer above its head and once that timer reaches the end, the minion destroys itself. Now, before you get all crazy, you can actually increase your max minions. One of those ways being through a perk. Anyways, let's run through this minion's AI for a second, as I think it's kind of interesting. So this minion has a list of priorities in which it finds a target. Its first priority is to target any enemy or breakable object that it's currently touching. If it's not touching an enemy or a breakable object, it then looks at what the player is attacking and chooses that. Let's just say that no enemies are being attacked. It then tries to protect its master by finding the closest thing in range to the player and choosing that as its target instead. Last but not least, if nothing's around the player, it will look around itself and choose the closest enemy to itself to target. I've gone ahead and flagged some things like the target dummies for it not to auto aggro to, as that would be kind of annoying when you're going in and out of the Enclave. The summoner also has an upgrade to their primary attack, as well as a couple upgrades to their secondary, but I'll leave this a secret for now. Moving on from the summoner class, let me list some more changes in this update. First, I implemented control configuration and added gamepad support. I also added 5 new pets and 7 new vanity buddies. There's also this new lock button for the hotbar, and I went ahead and made sure the stat menu looked more like the loadout menu. We also now have elemental bonuses depending on what enemy you're fighting, a new Valentine's Day vanity hat, 6 new spells, a tutorial, and of course I fixed a bunch of bugs. There's a massive list of other things I changed, not just for this update, but the previous one as well. Not to mention an additional week's worth of work that has gone into the next update. But I think this video is already long enough and has done a good job of covering the larger things implemented. To some of you, maybe this seems like a lot of stuff for 500 hours worth of work. Or maybe not. I know in the past I've made my fair share of Game Jam games that took only a fraction of the time. At a glance, those projects might even look more impressive, but with any larger project, the sheer amount of backend work that goes into it, as well as making sure the code base is clean and performant, definitely takes a large amount of that time. At the end of the day, as long as progress has been made and you're enjoying yourself along the way, just like me, it really doesn't matter how long it takes. But with that, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you made it this far, thank you so much, you're a real one. I encourage you to wishlist the game on Steam, join the playtesters over on the Discord, or just interact with the video. It really helps me out and gets the game out there to as many people as possible. Huge super duper thanks to all the playtesters so far. You guys are making this thing so much better than I could have ever anticipated. And to everyone else watching, I will see you guys in the next video.